Broadcasting on the internet airwaves from the great state of Minnesota, my name is Sean and you're listening to The Sean Tabbitt Show. Sean Tabbitt here from the Sean Tabbitt Show at NRB 2016 in Nashville, Tennessee. I have the pleasure this afternoon of speaking with my good buddy, John Schlitt. It's always an exciting time when him and I get to hang out, and he's got some new projects in the works that I didn't even know about. So I'm so excited to share that with the listeners. So, John, great to speak with you again, buddy. Welcome to the show. Was about once a year, buddy? I mean, uh, it seems like uh, an NRB, we get to at least talk in person, and it's good to see you. We're on a kind of a rhythm of once or twice a year we're at least bumping into each other or doing an interview about something. So even in the midst of how busy both of us are, we find a reason to get together and chat, and that is a good thing. Now, the last couple times you and I have talked, two years ago, the idea of John Schlitt Ministries was still kind of in its infancy, and every time we connected, you're getting more and more defined on what that is and what that's about. So uh, I think a good place for us to start today is just give us an overview of your vision for John Schlitt Ministries, and then after that, we'll go into the product that is related to that so people can learn more about that as well. But what's your heart? What's your vision? What do you want to be doing with John Schlitt Ministries in this stage of your career in life? I want to make a difference. I want to make a difference, and I I want to see uh, lives changed. And uh, to do that, it takes money. And John Schlitt Ministries, I was hoping, could be a unit where it, we could gather gather an income to where I could go out and do this basically free, you know, uh, uh, love offering, whatever, but know that I was still taking care of my family. I believe that God has allowed me amazing blessings through music, through uh, the industry, as, as they might say, Christ, Christian music. And I really feel that it's important for me to not sit down and say, good, it's over. It's never over. Talking about Christ, lifting up the name of Jesus Christ is never over. So if I'm not being supported by the industry anymore, I need to go out there and find out what God has for me and see if through John Slip Ministries, I can go forward even to the next level. And so that's why it's been so hard to formulate what John Slip Ministries was or is or will be. It probably will change as time goes on. But the focus I have at this moment is the fact that I'm an encourager and it's time for me to go out and start making a difference for others, for other ministries, for churches that need uh, new roofs, for uh, orphanages that need maybe an, a new bedroom suite that you know for more bunk beds, all these kinds of things. And I watched concerts be very productive as far as financial rewards, uh, and I hate to say it that way, of course, they were Christian concerts, so the most important thing was seeing lives change, how many came forward, but also there was a financial blessing there. I would like to see those financial blessings going to other ministries, and I'd like to go in and, and do concerts for them because that's what God's always allowed me to do. That's my sort of cup of tea thing, and bring in money that goes to these ministries instead of to me. I'm going to venture that throughout this whole process, as God's given you a vision for John Schlitt Ministries, you've had to answer the question, why? Why am I doing this? It's different than just doing music, which has obviously been a huge part of your life and your career. And interestingly enough, uh, your new book and audiobook is titled Why? Because that's a question you've been trying to answer. So I guess I might think of this as a sort of manifesto for John Schlitt Ministries, if you will. So. Uh, Tell us, uh, what can people expect to encounter there? It's a very simple write, because I wrote it. And basically, it was answering the question. I had a friend who kept asking me, John, why are you doing this? Why aren't you home just working in your shop, your woodworking shop, and just enjoying life? I mean, aren't you supposed to retire at this age? No. And I kept saying, no, there's too many things to do. I mean, as Jesus would say, the harvest is much, but the harvesters are few. And... I've been blessed. I've been given opportunity. I've been given a way of going out and reaching people, how many ever it might be. And for me just to sit back and say, good enough, I'm taken care of, That how selfish is that? So they kept asking me, why are you doing it? Well, I finally had to sit down and figure out why I am doing this. And it really came down to the fact that I realized I'm an encourager. And being able to go on stage, sing songs that lift up Christ in an exciting venture. I mean, come on, rock and roll is exciting music form. It's not necessarily all praise and worship. 
But I'm singing about an exciting subject. His name is Christ. So to me, the melting of rock and roll and Jesus Christ totally makes sense. So the book was sort of my self-discovery. What motivates me? Why am I doing what I'm doing? And where do I want to go? Now, the book is, oh, this is just the first, you almost call this first chapter, because who knows what I'll be saying next time, you know? But this is where I'm at at this moment. And this book was, I think, it sort of explained a typical Christian, and what is he trying to do? What motivates him? Why is he doing what he's doing? And reminding people just how blessed we are through his testimony. And it's not a testimony, it's really, it's a self-discovery. And I think it's it, the folks that have read it are very interested in it because they can relate to it. And I think we all can. We're, no matter what age we are, we're always trying to figure out how we relate in God's plan of that moment. And mine is just, uh, it's my moment. And we did an audio book also that goes hand in hand with this. Now, somebody, oh, do you sing in the book? No, I'm not singing the book. I'm speaking it with an emotion that only I could do through vocal that I can't do on writing. So it was actually very cool that someone gave me the opportunity to do it, and I didn't. I go, I can't do that. Oh, yeah, you can. Just be you. And it turned out really well. And I, what I would suggest if folks are interested is get the book and get the audio and follow it with the book. And uh, the book is also a, sort of a Pictionary of my past. It's got a lot of pictures of, of me through my years, and every page is a picture with the words on top of it because I wanted a Pictionary history of myself also. One of the things I was excited about today, I remember a number of years ago when we talked, for me, I was like, oh, this is kind of weird because I always interview these authors. I don't remember if that was the Christmas Project interview we did, and you're like, well, hey, I'm a musical author, and now I don't know what to think of you because you're a musical author and you're an author, so you're pulling double duty, but it's... I just wanted to qualify your program a little better, that's all. And here I went and changed the name of my show, you know, <laughs> so I didn't have to deal with that problem anymore, but regardless of what you call yourself, it's always so much fun to talk to you. Now, I've been seeing on social media, I've been seeing uh, information about the book and the audio book. Are these available now? Where can people get a hold of them if they want to... See, they're tools to help finance the ministry. These are the only two items that I have that uh, are absolutely dedicated to nonprofit ministry. And so you would find it on johnschlipministries.org. And look that up, and, and it, there's a, a little store in that, or there's a something where, I hate to say it, people do this for me, and I'm not quite sure how it works, but I do know you're supposed to go to johnschlipministries.org, and you can find the material there. Well, we'll make it easy for folks. The show notes for this episode, you'll be able to find that at seantabot.com. I'll have links to any book, audiobook, album that we're talking about today. It's all right there. We'll make it easy. You can just click on through. The other thing I was delighted to find out today is you have a new album. It's always an exciting time when there's new John Schlipp music. We all know that. But this is with some new folks you're collaborating with. So what's the name of the band? How did it come together? What's the name of the album? Well, actually, the name of the band is Union of Sinners and Saints, and the name of the album is the same, Union of Sinners and Saints. And no, don't ask me who's a sinner and who's a saint. The truth is we all are sinners, but through the blood of Jesus Christ, we become saints. We're saints of the family of God. And I, I'm excited about that. And the music is a wash between Whiteheart, Billy Smiley, and Petra, John Schlitt. And we joined together and we started writing songs and realized that we do bring a lot of flavor of both bands into it, both word-wise and musical styles. And it started formulating in an exciting way, and it's like, this is really a cool sound. I mean, when both of us enjoy ourselves, you can have the taste of Whiteheart and the taste of Petra both. And we've co-wrote a lot of songs together with some help from some new people that are part of the band. It's just been an exciting time. We did one Petra song and one Whiteheart song that if we had enough, people would have been disappointed. And we did it our way. And the melding is really great. It's really a good thing that the record will be out in June, between the 1st and the 15th. And there's a single out right now that's sort of a teaser that I think is out now on, on iTunes. It, we, I call it the Easter Project. But uh, I think it'll be exciting for you. Just look it up. It's a, uh, what's the name of the song? Uh, whatever it's called. Uh, anyway, it's, I call it the Easter song, but it's uh, by the Union, Union of Sinner States. And, and check it out. Yeah, well, and I'm closer to the notes where it's written down. Uh, the track you're going to want to look for 
from Union of Sinners and Saints. It's called Christ the Lord Has Risen Today. That's the one. Yeah, I knew it was something like that. I'll tell you, it has been a roller coaster. We have, this thing has happened so fast. This song was done like three months ago. So that's my excuse. That's why I can't remember the title, but it's a great tune. I mean, it's a classic. But we sort of did it the way we'd like to hear it, so it's, uh, maybe, it may be unusual to you. So, Because I, I think of the Christmas project, and when we first talked about that, you're like, you know, Sean, it's the Christmas music you fell in love with, but John Schlitz style. Would you say this new music from Union of Sinners and Saints, is it kind of a combination White Heart slash John Schlitz style? How would you describe the style of the music you all put together? I think it's a slice between White Heart and Petra. I'm using a lot of the Petra sounds that I, I grew up with that were so familiar to me. And Billy's doing the same with Whiteheart, and I think it's amazing. It really is a cool sound. And I think we're gearing it to, uh, you know, our age group, the 30 on up. And if the young want to listen to it and are excited about the retro type of feel, I think they'll love it. It's a fresh sound, but it's retro. We're gearing more to that older generation that I think has missed that new stuff, that stuff that they're familiar with. Well, John, if people want to find out more about why, they want to find out more about Union of Sinners and Saints, where's the best place for them to do that on the web? JohnSchlittMinistries.org and JohnWSchlitt.com. Again, I'll have links for all of these things in the show notes. Our guest today, John Schlitt, one of my favorite guests of all time. Go out and find the book, audiobook, why. I'll have links in the show notes for that. And then dropping in June, Union of Sinners and Saints. You're going to want to check that out. John, buddy, always a great pleasure to speak with you. Thanks so much for sharing with us today. Seriously, thank you for allowing me to have the time to share what's going on. You guys have always been a real blessing to me, you especially, and I thank you for it. And that's all for this episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show. If you have a question, comment, or suggestion, you can connect with me via email using show at seantabbitt.com. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, where I go by the Twitter handle at stabbitt. And if you enjoy the show, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. Until next time, this is your host, Sean Tabbitt, signing off.